Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Milliard. I'm executive editor of Healthcare IT News, and welcome to CIO Spotlight. I'm here today with Dr. Shafiq Rab, who's the Chief Digital Officer and Chief Information Officer at Wellforce in Massachusetts. Welcome, Dr. Rob. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mike, uh, for the opportunity. I'm always happy to see you and talk to you. So you guys announced earlier this summer that you were going to be migrating uh, your, your EPIC EHR and all your kind of clinical infrastructure and, and you know, I think it's 300 or so different apps uh, all to AWS. Um, and, and I believe that was your decision to make. Um, why, why did you make it and, and what are you hoping to accomplish? Uh, so we didn't migrate the electronic health record. We actually built it brand new in the cloud, de novo. Okay. Uh, so that's the beauty of it that anybody who's buying Epic uh, the EHR can put it in, right? Second was that we did migrate some of the legacy applications to go with it. I call it Alibaba and the 40 Thieves and the 90 core travelers. So I gave that name because it's easy to understand to make electronic health record work. Electronic health record needs 40 Thieves to go with it, to make it easy. Similarly, those 40 thieves in Alibaba do some basic thing because in the healthcare system, you have other things that happens. You have a PAX, you have imaging, you have uh, scanning, you have eligibility. So those are the core travelers. And when they hear the good news, other people come along. The idea has to be in one place. The, and the idea has come to my head about four or five years ago, we tried it. We never succeeded. The, people, the reason we could not succeed before and why we are succeeded, so it's already in the cloud, it's live now, just let you know that. But to make that happen, many things had to happen. One, the technology, that means the hard drives, the speed of it, that means not to have latency, that means the GFR, the IOPS, so I had to match below seven milliseconds. Well, we are connecting at below one millisecond. Below three millisecond, the eyes cannot see the difference. That was the first impediment. Second impediment was to get to it, you need 100 gig ports. They're expensive. They had to become affordable. Third thing was that the advent of 5G. So even though I was the first guy to put 5G's antenna in my last job for, for AT&T, right. and healthcare wrote about it, but it was just an antenna and work. It is getting mature now with the next modem, Snapdragon X650 six, uh, or 65, that's the right number, the true 5G is available. That means to connect at 10 gigabit. Then the phones and the edge computing also speed it up so it can work out. So cloud computing, edge computing, connectivity, and cybersecurity. Four things came together. The fifth and the sixth thing is a place where you put it in. So the CFO has to be okay with it. The CEO has to be okay with it. The board has to be okay with it. And the general uh, what do you call it, assumption that cloud is not a bad thing. It's a good thing because my Amazon is there. The pandemic helped us to understand that cloud and other things can be used for other purposes. So that allowed us to make the financial decision, to make the political decision. And then AWS and Amazon came through for that. And the electronic health record company, Epic also had the courage to say that, yeah, we can give it a shot. Presently, the way technology and AWS is not, but their competitors are also getting there. But here is the beauty of it. Somebody has to be the first. And I had done it. I have done five other things as first. So to do that, you have to be not suicidal, <laughs> but you have to be uh, brilliant enough to understand how to take that balance. I'm lucky that the same team that has been with me, has been for 12 years with me between my three jobs. Obviously, IT is, is going to be critical, but also talk about uh, clinical buy-in um, as, as you That's work on it. That's correct. So when a person 
uh, becomes fortunate like me and the luck supports him, apparently there are people who like him. So in a job, if you have a likability, then you can do things. I'm fortunate that the CMIO, that the CMO, the chief quality officer, chief physician executive, Dr. Wagner, who Mike Wagner, a lot of people know him. Mm -hmm. the, the other hospital CEOs, Mike Tarnoff, phenomenal surgeon and CEO of Top, Jody, who's the CEO of uh, Lowell General, they all bought into it because we are all trying to get to the cloud, not to get to the cloud, but to be able to provide healthcare anywhere, anytime. Wellforce is a platform. It's not only a healthcare system. Hospitals are part of it, one division. Home healthcare is one division. CIN is one division. Joint venture, funding, uh, innovation, one division. But our common goal is to provide access and delivery to care seamlessly. And without cloud, we cannot go faster. Uh, because if you go order a server, it takes you three months with a chip shortage. Here you can spin in in two seconds. So that's how the, but the biggest thing in the cloud going, apart from all of these, what I talked about is also the workflow. To take the workflows into the cloud, hence the 800 people, mm -hmm. hence the other people. There's a workflow work groups. There is an advisory council. They all sit and talk about what enhancement can be done on the workflow. So that's the premise of it. But the good news is that since now we have proven it, anybody can do it. As like uh, in the movie Rata 2, he said, if I can cook it, you can cook it too. How have uh, Epic and AWS been helping? And what are some keys to you know having vendors be, be good partners on a massive project like this? First of all, uh, I'm biased to Epic. I love Epic. Epic is my first love. You should know that. I profess it openly. My wife gets upset about it. Uh, Epic people were, as always, hesitant, as always, cautious, as always, like, uh, uh, is hard. But they came in with both feet, both hands, and with full heart to support it. AWS, uh, uh, I cannot thank them enough uh, to have the courage uh, to not only listen to me, but improve their hardware and their hard drive. The newer hard drives are coming out too, which I know that they're faster and better, but to put their R&D team, put their professional team and put their support team behind it. Uh, and, and not only give a account manager, but uh, people on top like Max, uh, I don't know what he does, but he's pretty high up in the institution. Everything is like, uh, everybody knows about this project. So, so, so there is visibility to it. So the right answer to this is that, that AWS is a true friend and a partner. Epic is my first love. So that's not a friend even. I, I, I can demand anything I want from Epic and Epic will do anything for its customer. I can say that today. I said that yesterday. I will say that tomorrow. Epic will stand by for its customer till they turn blue. It's a great company to work with. Phenomenal people. Judy Faulkner, God bless her, man. I hope she lives forever. Okay. You know, it's it's kind of hard to remember sometimes that it's not that long ago that a move like this would have been unheard of. Um, you know, there, oh. there, there wasn't a trust in the cloud. There, they didn't trust the privacy. They didn't trust the security, you know. It was used here and there, but something on a whole scale nature like this would have been unheard of. Um, could you have imagined doing something like this five or, or 10 years ago? So just to let you know, I've been trying to do this for 10 years. I have not succeeded. So here's the part that people don't know. Everybody thinks that's such a glorious thing and I'm such a smart guy and I just did it. It's not like that. I've been doing it for 10 years. I have at least failed minimum. I failed at Akinsac, I failed at Rush. So two health systems, I failed, I couldn't do it. Uh, many reasons, many things. Uh, technology was not there. Tried it at uh, Hackensack, made a fake cloud, put a hypervisor on it, but it's not scalable. So 
So I failed many times, but the good news in all of this is that uh, I would not have imagined that this would have been successful. But knowing me, I'll keep on trying till I'm successful. So my mother used to call me relentless. So God bless her soul. She was not wrong about it. And no, it was not possible because the maturity of the technology was not there. The consensus of the public was not there. And then the EHR companies were not ready for that either. So I was fortuitous that the time came. And since I was at it, we grabbed the moment and voila, we are there now. And you're pursuing a fairly aggressive time frame. You know, what, what are you hoping for as you look towards the rest of this year and, and into next spring? So uh, thank you for calling it aggressive. <laughs> so I don't believe that because when you go to the ER or when you're going for a stent, if you have a quarter semi, you can't tell the patient that you have an aggressive timeline. You got to treat them, right? Healthcare needs a lot of changes. There has to be payment reforms. There has to be a lot of things. There are a lot of people who don't have access to healthcare. They are poor, they live in, their language is different. At the same time, even though people are middle income, even they can't afford healthcare. So there's something not right about it, but we are all working towards it. Everybody talks about quadruple aim. We're trying to talk about it. For the rest of the year, here's the plan. We are doing a digital transformation. So cloud is only one component. We are appifying it. Appifying means we have created an app, which you will hear about, uh, which is not a typical app that sits on top of Epic. It not only alerts you for your medication, not only alerts you for your visit, but the patient is part of the care team. So we are creating a new concept, which is not new. Everybody thinks doctor nurses are the care team. Actually, is the patient is the first part of the care team. So the drug adherence, patient participation, and being there for the patient. Let me explain to you what that means. Everybody thinks that we are when we go to the hospital, we are sick. We are sick only 5% of our lifetime. 95% of the lifetime, we're not sick. But disease is progressing. We are getting there. So if we become part of you for the rest of the 95% of the time, you're at a grocery store. You're thinking, this is good or bad. Scan it, somebody's going to tell you. So if we are there for you, suppose the doctor asks you to walk a mile. You walked only half a mile on your Apple Watch. We know you walked half a mile. The chatbot tells you, Brother Mike, please complete the mile. I love you. <laughs> so you see, to become part of the life of the patient, or somebody had cancer, they had chemotherapy. Now they have to go to a wedding. They need a wig. Click on it. Your EHR knows the circumference. We know the company. It comes to you next day to your home. You attend the wedding. Because at the end, we're trying to have improved quality of life. It's not about only being healthy and care. It's about living life. Like Morgan Freeman said in a movie, I love movies, get busy living or get busy dying. I was from Shawshank Redemption. So we are trying to create hope and by using technology and our programs. So when you're asking what the future is, future is to create a frictionless environment where patients, doctors, nurses, healthcare, community members can live their lives happily. So with there are a couple of other things coming and when you interview me next time, I will tell you what the other thing that we have finished. Okay, just another quick question before we go, you know, as, as we look towards the completion of this project, what are some challenges you're keeping an eye out for and, and hoping to avoid, you know, you know, technical challenges, you know, implementation challenges as, as you look forward? Um, the, so the challenges that I'm looking for is user adoption mm -hmm. and experience. How do I enhance the experience? That means uh, I don't want to build something for you. So we are trying to include people from the community, not only healthcare workers, but actual patients and actual people who live in the community to give us guidance to our app the way we are building. The obstacles that I look forward to is that if this Delta variant becomes totally insane, that will stop the work that we are doing and we have to go back, become doctors and take care of patients because uh, 
at the end or at the beginning, we are care providers. Our healthcare systems are for our people. Epic, going to the cloud, apps, these are secondary things. People matter first, people come first. So they're not obstacles. We are care providers, that's what we are here for. And when the time comes, we can be counted on. If the community knows it, we know it. Our duty comes first. So uh, I hope that we are all healthy and I hope that we go back to normal as soon as possible. Uh, those are the things that are front and center. Uh, other than that, uh, we are very fearless people. It sounds like it. I think you, you hit the nail right on the head there. So uh, listen, Dr. Rob, this is a terrific uh, conversation. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I have only one comment. If Please. anybody needs any help, if anybody wants to know how to do this, more than happy to talk to them, more than happy to serve them as I have learned from others. It's my pay time to pay forward. I'm sure there's some folks out there who might take you up on that. Thank um, you. Thanks for, for, for talking to us uh, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, see you next time on CIO Spotlight.